Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Making Games in Java. I didn't mean to press that. Um, in today's episode, we're going to put more tiles on the actual interface, and we're going to get the uh, face drawing, like drawing the faces of them, working. We're not going to get the actual game itself working, uh, but clicking tiles will switch what it shows and the like. Alright, so first things first, we're going to go down here. Um, now, if I do this and I add like three tiles, um, and then I go in here and I change this from color dot, oh, and I change this from color dot black, um, hold on actually here. Let's make this take a color uh, first. Color C. Alright. Um, and we change this to new tile color dot black. Uh, there's a point I'm making by this, by the way, guys. Um, and I'll show you what that point is in just a moment. Uh, blue and red. And we run this. We're going to get this red box. But where's the black and the blue one? Um, well, if we close this box, um, now, here's the problem. Get content pane, by default, can only shows one item, and it makes it take up the entire thing. The reason for this is because of what we call a layout. In Java, layouts are what determine where things go in a uh, pane. So if we get content pane, and we do set layout, we can make a new, or we can give it a new layout. Now Java has given us a lot of built-in layouts, one of which we're going to use. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them. In fact, I'm only going to go through two of them in this series, I believe. Um, one of them is flow layout, which we're going to use today just to get things going. Uh, so new flow layout, and just put parentheses, uh, then import it by hovering your mouse and clicking import. What, and flow layout just is really simple. It just places items depending on their size and all of that. It just throws them around. It doesn't really have any specific order other than that. It goes from left to right and then up and down. There we go. We've got our black, blue, and red boxes showing up now, um, which is what we wanted. And now we're going to actually remove two of... Uh, we won't remove... Yeah, we will. We'll remove them for now and put them back in in just a moment. Copy. There we go. Um, save it, and we're going to get rid of this color C and change this back to color dot black. There we go. So now when we run this, we're going to get three black boxes. Um, and actually, at to, no, we'll do it. All right. So next up, we have to make these to where when you click these boxes or these tiles, um, something actually shows up on them, right? We have to get it to where when you click on these boxes, you actually see the other side, the other color. Well, to do this, we're going to make a uh, new method, and it'll be a public void show face. Um, and all this is going to do is set background uh, face color okay and we're also to retaliate against that we're gonna make a public void hide face set background uh, color dot black and that'll just hide the face color again so that's all we're doing for now next up we need to act that's going to show the face and hide the face but if we click these, we see nothing happens yet. So that's what we're going to fix next, is we're going to make it to where when you click these items, they actually, you know, do something. To do this, we have to implement what is called a mouse listener. A mouse listener in Java allows us to pull in our mouse events. The mouse is in screen now. It allows us to pull in the events from the mouse. And I'm going to have to pull this wire through as I talk to you. Um, and as we 
get these events from the mouse, we can hear when it clicks something, uh, hovers over something, unhovers, like pulls the mouse out, scrolls the wheel, which button it clicks with, all kinds of cool stuff. To do this, we implement, and I'm not going to teach too much about implementing, but I will in a moment, um, a little bit. So when you implement something, it's kind of like extending something, except um, you can implement multiple things, but you can only extend one thing, right? Um, and now once you implement something, though, you have to take in some of the methods from the uh, thing you implemented, and you have to redefine them. To do this, oops, backspace, um, let's hover over tile, and you'll see it tells us the type tile must implement the inherited abstract method mouse listener dot mouse clicked mouse event. To do this, just click add unimplemented methods, and then down here, we've got a lot of new methods. We're going to delete most of what they say just by uh, selecting them and then clicking control or pressing control D as we really don't need anything but mouse clicked. All right. So in this mouse clicked um, method, we're going to do mm, just show face for now. We'll make it more uh, useful later. Uh, but for right now, all we need to do, it, to do is show face. So we'll run. Oh, okay. Um, everything we do is wired up and ready to go. But there's one last thing. Just implementing the mouse listener does not make you listen to the mouse. It just means you're capable of listening to the mouse. But now somebody has to add you as their mouse listener so that you can listen to the mouse for them. And we're going to add the mouse listener for ourselves. So add mouse listener this. Once we do that, it will officially work. Click. Oh, look at that. The one in the middle turned white. So did the one on the right and the one on the left. Um, if we change this color to something more apparent, like orange, and we click. <laughs> That's the least orange orange I've ever seen. What the heck? Um, okay, we're going to open up paint.net um, and go to orange here. And we're going to actually copy 255 and 125. That's what we'll do. Um, we're gonna, that's the worst thing ever. Uh, color dot new. Is that right? No, no, it's not. We need new color 255 125 and 0 what the heck no I guess numlock wasn't on um, which is a big problem 125 and 0 now when we run this it'll look actually orange boom it's Halloween it's festive because it's October and it's yeah <laughs> so we click these items and they will now turn orange Next episode, my goal is to make it to where we have different tiles that um, each have their own face color that is definitely set um, very easily. And then following that, we will continue to move on and soon we'll have a functioning memory match game. Um, just to glance over what we've learned in this episode, though, um, we learned first off about layouts. That flow layout allows many things to be put onto the screen, and it will show them at their preferred size, preferred everything, and uh, put them in order. We've also learned that you can implement things such as mouse listener, and by implementing mouse listener, you can listen in to events from the mouse. But in order to actually use a mouse listener, you must add the mouse listener to the appropriate object. Um, we've learned a little bit about uh, colors. In fact, I'm going to cover one thing of colors in just a moment. Um, we've learned how to add multiple items. And now for the last thing we're going to learn today, we're going to learn what does it mean to use this new color. So in the past, all we've done is color.black and color.white, basically, right? 
Well, those give you default colors already put in there by Java itself. Uh, they're static methods, actually, which means they never change and they can be accessed without creating an object. But color is a class. You can, in fact, create an object of it. And when you create an object of it, it takes three integers. One of them is the red, one of them is the green, and one of them is the blue. Um, these are common colors in... Uh, oh, I'm sorry about that. These are common colors when it comes to computers to use to determine an actual color. Red, green, and blue. It's how light works. I'm not going to go into all the physics of it, but I do recommend you look it up if you're confused and you think the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow, not red, green, and blue. Yeah, that's true for crayon and paint, but that is not true when it comes to light and basically everything else. Red, green, and blue are your go-to colors. So we have 255 red, which basically means all the red you can have. We have 125 green, which means halfway, and zero means no blue at all. Uh, even though some would argue that green is yellow and blue, when it comes to light, it's not. Uh, in fact, yellow, I believe, is green and blue. Uh, it's a little different. Do look it up. Um, but these numbers are on a scale of 0 to 255, and each one of these numbers is. So therefore, there's like 255 to the power of 3 uh, possibilities, or maybe it's 3 to the power of 255. One of those two. Do the math um, and figure it out. Post in the comments below, which is it? Is it 255 to the power of 3 or 3 to the power of 255 as to how many different um, combinations you can come up with? Thank you for watching, guys, and I will catch you all later.